reports of being accused of having discharged a firearm. The state has kept me here for the past five years because they can't defeat my political ideas. They want to use the courts and abuse the state and the security forces to suppress my voice. And they will never win against me. For because I'm not scared of prison. When you are a revolutionary, prison is your nickname. Because when you join the revolution, there are two things that will happen. You either attain what you stand for, or you'll be killed for what you stand for. Not prison can stop me from executing that which I stand for. No racist magistrate can stop me from executing that which I stand for. No small boy of a prosecutor can persecute me and jail me for what I stand for. For because I'm not scared of a magistrate, I'm not scared of a prosecutor, I'm not scared of a judge, I'm not scared of a president, I'm not scared of capitalism, I'm not scared of white monopoly capital, I'm not scared of anyone. I want all of them combined, the day of victory shall come. Because that day you are destined for. And when you are destined for victory, no one can stop you from making it to that day of victory. So fighters, we must never be shaken by persecution of our leadership. Not only in the courts, but in the media, through journalists that are part of the establishment. We must not be scared of those who are using state institutions like SARS, like the Hawks, like the police to try and suppress a dissent. Comrades, when we joined and took the position to go against the ANC, we all knew that this is part of the price we'll have to pay. So when it happens to us, we are not shocked. We, we are always ready for that day. And when that day comes, we know that day has arrived. The enemy has decided to persecute us. We have postponed the case to July. Because we did not agree that we must hold the case before elections. Because they want to hold us here while they are busy campaigning outside. So we said to them, we are not coming back here until after the elections. We will come back here and to sit and listen to that incompetent magistrate who comes late to court, who can't get her papers in order, who can't read her own judgments, who adjourns the court during judgment to go back seat and receive Praveen Gordon's call and receive Ramaphosa's call and receive Batoy's call. When she comes back to give a judgment, she's shaking like hell because it's not a judgment, it's a sponsored judgment. Where have you ever heard such a thing that a magistrate lives in the middle of a judgment to go behind the court and when she comes back she's shaking like a little girl being asked in grade one to give an English presentation in front of her classmates. I know the lawyers will say, why does he speak about the magistrate like that? I don't care about her feelings, I care about the law. What does the law say? Not what the magistrate feels. <laughs> Comrades, a magistrate comes to court that was postponed for so many days with papers that are all over. She can't read her own notes. Her judgment is so disorganized, then she's, what is even worse? There must be a separation of powers between a magistrate and the police. When she comes into court, she says to a police officer, go and fetch judgment, I forgot it in the office. 
the magistrate must be the only person who sees the judgment. The judgment must sit here on the magistrate. She leaves a judgment in the office. A police officer sees the judgment because the magistrate said, go and fetch my judgment. What type of incompetence is this? What type of nonsense is this that we are subjected to for the past five years of an incompetent white magistrate? If it was a black magistrate, these people would have written about her that she's disorganized, she doesn't know how to read, she doesn't know how to write. Because it's a white magistrate, they don't say she's incompetent. She is incompetent. When she delivers a judgment, you can see that she's not sure, she's not convinced, it's not her own conviction. I don't care about my judgment. I care about the judgment of accused number two. She changes, she amends the charge sheet from the box, from the bench. Because the accused number two is just for handing over a firearm to me. The statements were about him handing over the firearm to me. Everybody said when they were playing a video, we can't see him handing over a firearm. Today, the magistrate says, no, that is not the charge. The charge is supply and broad thing like that. We don't know as we stand here, what is the actual charge of accuse number two. And then we must keep quiet to nurse a feeling of a white woman. We don't care about feelings of anyone. We care about what does the law say. I said this knowing very well that on the 15th of July, I'm going to appear before her. I'm not saying this here. I will say it to her. Because I'm not scared of her. I will tell her, you are not applying the law. The reason why you did not discharge accused number two, you were scared of releasing a white man and leaving a black man in the dock. What type of law is that? The guy must continue to be charged because if he's released, it will look like we are persecuting a black man. You are persecuting me, whether you release Adrian or not. The reality is that you are looking out, you are looking for me. You don't want Adrian. You have nothing against Adrian. Release my white man and face me alone. I don't need anyone. I can stand up to all of you alone. I don't want people to die for my sins. I die for my own sins. I will never start that which I will never finish. Everything I start, I finish it. So comrades, that's what we are dealing with and we'll deal with that after elections. From here, in our mind, there is no court. There is no case. In our mind, is voter. We must go after voters because we need to take this state and stop this nonsense and send this magistrate to a retirement home because he doesn't deserve to sit on the bench where she is. We are now going to campaign. We are going to do what the student command is doing in all institutions of higher learning. Abu Gogo, go and eat the ANC food, take their blanket, take their food parcels on the day of election, vote EFF. Because those blankets are not ANC blankets, those are your taxpayers' money. Those food parcels, you know the student command, I like them, uh, former national chair. They go inside the ANC meeting and take ANC t-shirts and eat ANC KFC and juice. When they finish, they don't take off the ANC t-shirts. They sing EFF songs in ANC t-shirts. T- I saw some of them wearing ANC t-shirts. These comrades are brutal. In Univen, the ANC called a big rally for students to vote for SASCO. 
they packed the stadium they called all types of artists including those untalented Muvango artists to go and appear the following day the badge was so big the EFF student command defeated the youth league SASCO uh, BYA Movango a uh, master KG everything put together the EFF defeated them so comrades we cannot be outshined by the EFF student command as the older and uh, mother body of the student command let's go into the village Duncan village all of these villages person to person once a person greets you how are you can we have a drink first let's check are you registered to vote yeah. secondly are you registered to vote eff yeah. because we must remove the anc especially here in the eastern cape amasela abu oscar mabuyane bahamba batenga young into nama masters batenga ma diploma batenga everything the whole premier going to procure a masters. They go stealing money of funerals. When they say there is a state funeral, they steal money. They steal money of Sasa. A lot of our grannies have not received their money because the ANC has stolen the money. They steal the money of students and as fast money. Today, our children don't have money to pay for accommodation. They don't have money to buy food. They don't have money to buy stationery because someone in the ANC stole the money of the poor. So we're going to remove them in 2024. If you miss that opportunity, you must know your suffering is forever. The youth when we say 1994 is your 2024 is your 1994 we mean that you are going to experience freedom for the first time if you are a youth you are a young person and you are not registered to vote you are a sellout you sold our future you you must be like 1976. The youth must stand up, not with stones, not with tires, armed with a pen. You go into a voting booth and vote for the EFF. Because the future is the EFF. So comrades, if you are here, you are not registered, you are part of the problem. If you are listening to us on social media and everywhere else in the media, you are not registered. You are part of the problem. You are at home. You are not registered to vote. You don't have water. You've got yourself to blame. You are unemployed youth of South Africa. You are in majority. Stand up and go and demand your jobs in 2024 in May. We must say to hell with unemployment. We want jobs and these jobs must be given to us according to our qualification. Not because we slept with someone in the ANC for us to get a job. We don't want that. People must be hired according to their qualification, not on the basis of their political affiliation. Whether you are ANC or you are EFF, as long as you are qualified for the job, you must get the job, not because of your same name. Comrades, in the EFF, we are proposing family, a legislation that is going to give the youth who are, uh, who are graduate and unemployed money because the graduates must get a stipend every month why they must be paid for going to school so that even those who are coming after you they must know going to school you will be paid 
because we want to encourage education. We don't have a problem with 350. How is I told I 350? If I only metric, money metric ya kupuk. It's a taunyan. Multi degree ikupa kupuk. It's 3.5. Multi e diploma it's 5. Multi masters in return. Why? We are encouraging the youth to go to school so that they don't worship criminals, they don't worship drug lords, they don't worship abusers of alcohol. Education must be fashionable. Lapa Epondi. Motu Achigabate. What are your qualifications? So that's the competing ama qualification. So now competing ama iPhone. What iPhone? What I mean, I okay, Cavella. What nonsense is that? So, Funa app. We are Kabang or out Kabang. That's what we want. If we have an educated nation, the ANC will be out of power tomorrow. They like you when you are not educated. They like you when you are not working because they control you through food parcel, through 350. That's why ANC does not want educated people. That's why Secretary General of the ANC is not an educated person. Because education in the ANC is never entertained. Comrades, we want Buffalo City to go back to its former glory. This municipality is rotten to the core. The ANC is messing it up day in, day out. And only the government of the EFF can fix this municipality. Comrades, you know Mdanzani is too small compared to Soweto. But Soweto, all of Soweto has got tar roads. All of Soweto has got street lights. If they can do that in Soweto, what about Mdantani? It can take just a year to fix Mdantani, give it proper roads, give it water, give it electricity, make sure the parks are in good condition for our children to play. Why should Abu Gogo from Dantani pay water and electricity when they are beneficiaries of Sasa. Because when they give you Sasa money, they are saying you are poor. The state is giving you that money because you are poor. Then they come through a back door to come and take the same money through water and electricity. Abu Gogo, under the EFF, you are not going to pay for water and electricity. When you are on the list of Sasa, we take that Sasa list, we put it on the computer of a municipality. It removes all your names because you are Sasa beneficiaries. The same thing about students. Why must you go to school when you apply for NS first? They say to you, is your mother unemployed? Is your father going to get a, a certified copy of a death certificate? Yet, your mother is a beneficiary of Sasa. If these universities are about thinking, why can't these universities produce a system where when you arrive, you give them the ID number of your mother? Then it tells them, this is a child of a Sasa beneficiary. She doesn't have to pay. No, they want you to display your poverty. Go to police station, go and get this. Hey, uh, uh, my father is dead. Hey, bring the death certificate. What type of a state are you? Because the state must know if your father is dead or alive because they are the ones who are issuing the death certificate. Why are they asking you to bring a death certificate when they could be having the death certificate themselves? It is because we are led by fools who can think, who are not innovative, who are not creative, all they know is to steal money. Comrade, DA is not an option. DA is for the white man 
and it only serves the white men. So we must never be even entertaining the DA. The EFF is for you, is for the land, is for the minerals, is for the banks of South Africa being returned into the hands of the rightful owners who are the indigenous people of the African continent and South Africa in particular. So let's go door to door. If you are a ground force, your happy place must be door to door. Every factory year must be visited by fighters and tell the workers the only party that is not working with the bosses is the EFF. The ANC work with the bosses to oppress the workers and steal the money of the workers. Comrades, if we go to May and you have not visited these factories here, these industries here, you must know we will never win the elections. Dalimbov used to work in some factory here of doing sweets. Mercedes, you must take him away. Let's go to Mercedes to go and address those workers there so that you can share with them your history so they know that we are not part, we are not just a lawyer. We are from the working class background and we appreciate the struggles of the workers. Comrades, this country is rotten to the core. They steal money left, right and center. They even put money under couches. I'm a dollar. A person steals money, puts it under his nose, you can see that nose is so fed, it's being fed with the dollars. Then he puts under mattresses the dollars. Who does that when your children are hungry? You go and hide money under mattresses. And these policemen don't arrest Ramaphosa that they found with illegal money, yet they arrest us for non-existing charges. What type of law is this one? Palapala will never die. If you want Ramaphosa to account for Palapala, vote for the EFF who are going to arrest Ramaphosa and make him accountable for the monies that he has been stealing from our people. Comrades, we said this year we are going to convert quantity into quality. We got one million members. We said we are converting them into quality. For sure you have seen the kind of quality we are now attracting in the EFF. Just this, through, this week alone, we got Advocate Mukwebani to come and join the EFF. We got Magasela, former Secretary General of SASCO, to come and join EFF. We got one of the best top DJs, Linda Sbia of Ukozi FM, to join the EFF. Why are you still sleeping on the EFF when the best of the best in society are coming to the EFF? Fighters, don't be tired. We are getting there. You must never be discouraged. You must never be tired because victory is certain. I am not preparing for the day of victory because that day is guaranteed. I'm now preparing a day after victory. Who becomes a minister of what? That's what I'm busy with now, not those things of other things. Because we are taking government. Eastern Cape, the, if there is a province that has been treated so badly in the whole of South Africa, as if you have never fought for freedom, is Eastern Cape. They call it a home of legends for nonsense reason. When you drive around, there's nothing that looks like legends. A home of Krisani, a home of O.R. Tambo, a home of Nelson Mandela, a home of Governor Mbeki, a home of Winnie Mandela. It looks like it's not a home that produced heroes 
of our struggle. When we take over in honor of those heroes who are going to turn Eastern Cape into a construction site and fix everything that is not working in the Eastern Cape. Bagged systems, you find them here. Long drop toilets, Eastern Cape. Mud schools, Eastern Cape. Children are crossing rivers and dying, Eastern Cape. When they want to bury people who are carrying a coffin, crossing a river, they are found in the Eastern Cape. The people of Epon, when you must take yourself serious. No any other province is subjected to what you are subjected to. There is no Malema who is going to come from Limpopo in Sishu and come to liberate you. There is no one who is going to liberate you. You have to liberate yourself. You have to say enough is enough. We will not allow this nonsense to continue. They give you rubbish service. Even when you give them high votes, they still don't care about you. But we seven Zile KZN Umsholos. When you drive in KZN, all the roads and not highways only, anything that is a main road in KwaZulu Natal has got a proper route. Yeah, President Mandela, President Mbeki, yet there's nothing. We want to fix Eastern Cape. We can fix Eastern Cape. Only the EFF can fix the Eastern Cape because EFF is not led by corrupt individuals. Born, we entered government in Johannesburg. MMC of safety. Mkini is from originally from here in Mdanzan. In eight months' time, we gave the people of Deep Slot a license station where the people go and apply for licenses and test their cars in less than a year. We are now rolling out houses in Eteguini to those people who were affected by the floods. ANC could not give them houses. When they appointed EFF, MMC, to head infrastructure and housing immediately in less than eight months we are giving those people houses imagine if we were to be given five years uh, we can take the sea to Jobek. five years is a lot if we do things within a short space of time like this we can do more for our people in eight months, now we're going to almost a year. There is no single MMC of the EFF who is accused of corruption. Not a single one. Why? We don't play with the public purse. We use public purse to deliver services to our people. So in Nelson Mandela, they will start seeing action because we have two MMCs there. We want to use Nelson Mandela to teach Buffalo City what they are missing if they don't vote for the EFF government. So fighters, let's spread the gospel. Let's work like nothing happened. We are coming back here in July. We will come back here victorious from the elections and will come to collect our victory in this court. There is no court that can take away that which the masses of our people have determined as their destination. So all of us, let's go to the ground, let's respect our leaders, let's make sure that the first registration day becomes a successful day. Young people must go and register. We trust you fighters. We know that you are hard workers and you don't apologize for what you are doing because your conviction is driving you. It is your belief in the economic freedom. That's why you are working the way you are working. Don't give up. When we leave here, double the effort. Make sure the whole Eastern Cape 
becomes red street by street, house by house, village by village, township by township, suburb by suburb, brick by brick, EFF shall rule the Eastern Cape. Amanda! Amanda! Viva EFF! Viva! Tata EFF! Tata! Oh no! <laughs>